For EP, climbing walls and handholds is our business, but that's really not why we're here. We're here to enrich people's lives and introduce climbing to the world. We know that once somebody gets an opportunity to go indoors and climb on a climbing wall, that they're going to be hooked and they're going to be a climber for life. And it's a very warm welcome back to Numea in New Caledonia for the lead finals here, the first set of lead finals, I should say, because we do have finals over two days here in Numea, New Caledonia at these IFSC World Youth Championships for 2014 here in the South Pacific from sea to summit. We welcome the world here to Numea. Oh, we're going to start with the Youth A Mayo final, leading to the eight that made it. Mark Brand of the Netherlands, Dimitri Buck of Switzerland. A couple of Austrians to follow, Jörg Palmer and Jan Luka Posch. Hannes Puman of Sweden, followed by two Japanese athletes who've had a superb U World Youth Championship, as he said. Yuki Hada and Shinichiro Nomura and Edinburgh's William Bosey will run off the Youth A Mayo final. The Mayo Youth B set of eight will be first from Spain, Mikel Aiza, Luna Casero Molina, followed by Muzuki Tajima, Arsene Duval of France, Kai Leitner of the United States, Matthias Posh of Austria, Min Young Lee of South Korea, Rudolf Rana of the United States, and Maichi Narasaki of Japan. There's confirmation of the eight, as I mentioned. Starting with Spain, Mika Aizaluna, Casano Molina, Mizuki Tajima, Arsene Duval, Kyle Leitner, Matthias Posh, Minyoung Lee, Rudolf Rana, and Maichi Narasaki. Finally, the female youth B set of eight. Starting with three Russians, Victoria Meshkolova, followed by Elena Krasovskaya, Arena Varik of Russia, followed by Switzerland, Michelle Hullinger, Natsuko Shimizu of Japan, Aisha Golo of Italy, Laura Stockler of Austria, and then Jania Gambre of Slovenia. That is the 24 climbers you'll see across your screen here in New Caledonia this evening. We're going to get underway in about four minutes or so from now. So as I mentioned, we've got three finals going on at the same time. We'll, we'll split the screens across so you see each climber go take off each route. It'll look a little bit like this, in fact. That's what it'll look like. We're going to give each climber the respect they deserve as they tackle each route in this final. The male youth A will be on the top left of your screen, followed by... So the female youth A will be the top left of your screen, followed by the... Male Youth A in the top right, and the Male Youth B in the bottom left-hand corner. And you'll see how everybody's getting on. You see the three tops right in the top there. That's what everybody is aiming for. Now, as I said, it's a World Youth Championship, so I'm delighted to have a World Youth panelist with me this evening. Delighted to be joined by Canada's Keitha Van den Bosch. Keitha, welcome to the commentary box. I know you've been looking forward to this all day. You must be really excited. And I'm happy to be here. Absolutely, it's great to have you here. Me and you went out arms on the, uh, the arena floor before, had a look at all three routes. Let's chat about all three before these finalists come out. Uh, female youth B route first, that's the one on the far left of the screen, this blue route on the screen now. What, what did you see? Uh, I saw a lot of chance for separation. Definitely a great show for all three climbers that will be climbing at the same time. Yeah, as, as you mentioned to me before, you know, on this uh, blue route, it's a little bit difficult for these uh, female climbers. It's, it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be taking a lot of stamina out of them in the early part, isn't it? Yeah, it's a route that has to flow properly, and you can't slow down. 
you have to keep it you have to keep at your entire pace throughout that first section and then when you get into the hard bits switch your concentration on to a pumpy route and just pull through it absolutely be interesting to see how those female youth climbers get on on that blue route the green route in the middle there that is what the male youth A's will be targeting and once again you said to me as soon as you looked at it you thought wow that's a tough start for those guys it is very uh, tough start um, mostly around the red holes that you can kind of see on the screen on the bottom side uh, that's going to be a really tough move uh, rest points getting into features trying to pull through the entire room is going to be a big challenge for them i'm going to make for an amazing show Finally, on the white route, on the, that will be what the male youth B route will be uh, looking at, and it's going to be an exciting show. So yeah, we're just moments away. And Kiefer, you were in the uh, men's youth A competition uh, yesterday. Looking at some of the names in that, you know, there's some exciting talents there. And who do you feel will maybe be the ones to look out for? Um, probably the people going either third to fifth. That's where I, I believe the hot zone is for those who will get the best on the route. So, so it should be interesting for Joel Palmer, Jean Luca Bosch, and Hannes Puman of Sweden. We are hit, just hit seven o'clock here local time and we are underway. Victoria Meskova of Russia in the top left of your screen. Mark Brand wasting no time whatsoever. And Mikael Eisenlina Casero Molina. Let's chat about Mark Brand first of all in your category and as you rightly mentioned the forekeeper, tough start, he's making a good job of it so far. Yeah, he makes the holes look better than they look from the ground. Way better. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, absolutely, Mark Brand getting us underway here as of it's Victoria Meskova, Mikel Eisenina, Casero Molina as well, the Spaniards in the bottom left of your screen. And as you can see, you can see all three in their glory in the bottom right. You see their progress. And Paul will try and go full screen at times, especially if one climb is nearly in the top as well. And then we'll cut back straight away to what you see right now, all four screens in all their glory. So Victoria Meshikova, the 14-year-old, the top left. Mika Eisenhuner Cassetta Molina, the 14-year-old who was fourth in the European Youth Cup out in Imst earlier this year. And Mark Brand, the 16-year-old from Amsterdam. 21st in Edinburgh. He got to the semi-final with a 34 plus. And as you mentioned before, Keith, when we were chatting outside, this is one of the few resting places that these guys have on this yeah. day mail route. From what I saw, he, he didn't make use of it much. He's shaking every single hold, which is a plus for any climber. So, you got uh, this good rest spot here, which he could use if he gets, it, if he gets his positioning right. And he's not making it too bad of a job of it so far as well. Let's have a look at the other two climbers as well. We'll keep an eye on Mark Brand. Victoria Meshikova, just seeing how she's getting on right now. It's been said as a pump start, but it looks like she's getting through it really well. She definitely is. This next move here is going to be really tough for most climbers. And 
why do you say that? Why do you think it, it, it was going to be tough for him? Um, just the way the move is, like, especially myself, I've done that type of move maybe once or twice. It's really hard. And Mika, as a lunatic said, on Molina, just right in front of me, he's about 20 feet away, right on the far right hand side of the wall. And I know on the bottom right of your screen looks a bit like a race right now, but we've got three free climbs <laughs> going on. But they're all in separate finals. It's like the lead duel for Marco. It is like a lead duel for Marco, isn't it? It's great to see. One thing I must say as well, the crowd here, here in New Caledonia, fantastic. And let's look at Mikael here, some great flexibility. Yeah. You have to be really flexible on this route for a uh, number of reasons. One, you have to be able to move your arms and legs perfectly independently. Hand-eye coordination has to be a plus on this route, especially if you're throwing for any hold. Uh, even your feet have to be very precise, or else it could lead to a potential fall. He's doing pretty well right now, unlike Mark Brown, who has uh, left the wall. I'll give you his score momentarily. Set the benchmark here. The Spaniard, Mikel Isaac, Ludicus and Molina has just departed the wall. So just Victoria Meskova, who is the only one remaining right now. And as we were well spotted when we went up there before, the rest of the point she's found. Yeah. And she's starting to make good use of it right now. This is at that point that you notice where the route starts to get harder and you're already pumped. So it'll be a really big challenge. And also one other thing that you mentioned as well, and you mentioned it earlier, that the longer they go into this route, the more stamina sapping it is. Yeah. And Victoria now looks like she's beginning to struggle. Yeah, she's starting to look very tired. And her chalk bag just flipped. Yeah, they're just all tangled up in her harness belt there, so just trying to get this right. Dimitri Bok of Switzerland just getting underway as well. Just just made his start. We'll, we'll show you him Ooh. shortly. But Meskova made a good move there. Good move coming back to that. That move is definitely a gamble. Mark Brand with a 36 plus was his score. And Victoria Meskova here. She's start keeping going with all her might and she's doing well. Oh. I spoke too soon. <laughs> you did. Trust me, Kiva, that will happen to you this evening. It's happened to me many a times. They've given the, what we know called the commentator's curse and it's just being a master of it right by now. Yeah, the MC out there is also having that curse too, especially <laughs> in qualifiers. <laughs> Dimitri Bok of Switzerland just getting underway. Mikael Eiser, Luna Casella Molina scored 39 plus on his route. Dimitri, 17 years of age from Bourbon, took part in the seniors lead IFSC World Cup in Imst a month or two ago when he came in 34th place. And also getting underway, we've got Mazuki Tajima. 14 year old from Japan. He's using his rest point there. Yeah, Dimitri just, as you mentioned to me before, Keith, you know, that this first red, run these first red features, that's a good rest point for these Yeah, players. especially that first one that he has, that first red hole. He's used it well, and now, continues his campaign in this final. A lot of these holds you really can't hold on too long or your fingers will drain immediately.
Keep updating on scores as they come in. Victoria Meshkova, 45 plus for the Russian climber. He sets the early benchmark. Great little view there from our cameraman. You can see both climbers. The difficulty that they have on both these green routes and this white route. And the next time we're getting underway on the green route, A route is Elena Krasabaskaya. Three Russian stars in the youth B female final. Akifa Dimitri is making steady progress here, isn't he? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's he's really not rushing through it. He's he's going through at his own pace. Every climber has their pace, and that seems to be his. Is anything in particular that you see? You know, when you climb yourself, is it? Do you enjoy going out quick? Do you enjoy going out slowly? Now, every time kind of the same, you have a style, don't you? Yeah. Like, if you look at a fast climber like Sean McCall, he does speed for a reason, I believe. He wants to go quickly. He, does, he wants to waste as little energy as possible. Some people want to take their time. It depends on the climber's style. Sometimes like to go on with it, so take the approach of patience. They got the spotlight out. That's the spotlight right now on Dimitri Vok. Nice little move there from the Swiss athlete. Going strong here. The crowd is cheering uh, for him a lot. And he's milking it, isn't he? He's enjoying himself out there. Yeah. That's something that helps the adrenaline keep, keep from flowing as well when you know the crowd's really behind you and you got your teammates here as well cheering you on. Yeah. Most climbers would just block out all noise and focus directly on the climb itself. Some seem to milk the applause. And Dimitri Volk here. Everyone's loving the show. Indeed, and so could Dimitri here. He's making a good fist of this. And he's only a few moves away here, Keeper. This could be a first top of the evening. Really struggling. Uh oh. But a good effort. It's a very good effort from Dimitri Box, and he will be delighted with his work. Mozuki Tajima now on the roof part. Of Struggling this with that clip. That seems like a hard clip to make. Why is that? Because you're already pumped at that point. And then, yeah, you'd be already pumped by that point, so yeah. no amount of rest can settle that if you don't rest efficiently on the route. Indeed. Kasabaski, that is. It comes up as well, so we've got three climbers who have departed. So we're a quarter of the way into the first three finals. And scores on the doors coming in. Dimitri Bok, 44 plus, has the lead in the male youth A final. Forty-four plus would be a definite hard score to beat. But anything can happen at a world championship like this. <laughs> indeed, indeed. You're pinching my lines, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Elena Krasovaskia, 37 plus from the Russian. Victoria Meshkova still leads with a 45 plus there. And the other score still yet to come in is the male UB. Uh, Mika Aiza, Lili Kusena Molina still leads with 39 plus. We're still waiting for the Japanese athletes, Mazuki Tajima score to come in. Now, York Palmer, third climber out in this male youth day. You said 
that Flyman's are coming out three and five, York Palmer, Juan Luca Posh, Hannes Freeman. The route will be warm for them, you, you felt, and you reckon one of these three could really have the potential of doing really well. Yeah. I notice when I watch World Cups, climbers would not fall purposely, but try and aim for a zone on the wall where they believe they could make it. Still waiting on Arsene Duval's score. Dimitri Vok was a 44 plus. Beaten by York Palmer, who's got in with 45 plus. Arsene Duval leads the Male Youth B final with a 43. That's where we stand. Three climbers in. It's been a good show so far, hasn't it? It's been great stuff. Great. So the Kyle Lightner just getting underway. The male youth B route. Uh, sincere apologies, ladies and gentlemen. We have some technical difficulties here with the internet connection here in New Mayor. Fighting our way here in New Mayor. As are the 24 athletes who are taking to the wall here in New Mayor. I got a chance to, to watch Kai yesterday. Very, very strong climber. I wish I had him as competition, but he's in the category below me. <laughs> yep, as I mentioned, a good, strong climber. He was disappointed with his qualifications when I chatted to him a couple of days ago. He got, he's gone out fourth in this final. And we'll see. Really well so far. Yeah, it's a slow and steady start here for uh, for Kai Lightner. Yeah. He was fourth in the World Youth Championships last year. 44 plus in his semi-final. You can tell by the way he's climbing, he really wants that world title. Indeed. So like that. Will he strike the bolt here? And put his name into World Youth Climbing Immortality. Another name on that trophy. It's a very good oh. climb this. And, you, and a bit of a gamble you thought then. Yeah, very big gamble. I wouldn't have done that myself. But it's what every climber is comfortable with and kind of thought it was worth a go. And now a good resting point for him. Yep. Once again. Des describe what's happening right now for, uh, uh, to kind for the viewers who are, aren't used to uh, climbing, as it were. You've got the climber yeah. and, the, and the journalist, as it were. Just, just describe what what, what, what this guy's looking at here. I can't really tell you his mental game because I can't read minds. <laughs> but, but the physicality of it. Uh, he seems pumped. Definitely making good use of it though. He's clipping efficiently, he's climbing efficiently, being precise with his feet. We could see a world title here with Kai. Well, there's four more people after Kai who, who may have a, a different thing to say about that, but as it were, Lightner may be the one who posts the score. And no doubt there'll be the guys sitting around the back in isolation will hear a roar. They won't know which one of the three climbers, but they'll know. And maybe Kai Leitner here. Coming close. M maybe, just maybe. Kai Leitner tops out here in this male youth B final. 
And now he has to dodge four bullets to stop him from winning the world crown. If I could dodge a real bullet, that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> Indeed. Je Jean-Luc Aposh. And also joining us is Michel Hullinger of Switzerland. So both climbers from Central Europe. Jean-Luc, has he got the right rest in? Oh, it looks like he's struggling a little. He is struggling to get that good rest point, but I think he has it. Definitely taking a gamble with that right hand. The left hand's the way to go. Now he's got it. He has it now. That clip is hard after those after that sequence of moves. Good smear. Good foot placements. Once again, we could see a top. Well, indeed. So far. It's Jorg Palmer who leads in the male youth A competition with 45 plus. And Juan Luca Posh, this is the area that so many climbers have struggled. That shoot for that left hand is really, really risky. What's the way to go about it, you feel? You have to really pull back your left arm and then shoot up with your momentum. So Laura Hillinger is the only climber on the wall right now. Hillinger, 15 years of age. Plus from Victoria Meshkova, who went out first in this Youth A, Youth B female competition. I do beg your pardon. And she's doing really well here, Keith, isn't she? She is. Slight shakes, pulling on the holds well. Very tough moves, it looks. That hand foot match looks pretty hard. But now the whole crowd willing it on. 45 plus is her target. Currently, oh. But as you mentioned, as we've chatted about the start of the program, the higher those girls go on that route, the tougher it gets for them. Yeah. Very much so. So then, let's run you through where we stand right now. Let's start with the male youth A. Jean-Luc Aposh of Austria leads 45 plus. Jorg Palmer, exact same score, but it goes on their countback scores from previous heats. And Jörg puts Jorg into second place. Dimitri Vogt of Switzerland in third place on 44 plus. Mark Brand the Netherlands, four on 36 plus. Four climbers so far in the male youth B competition. Kai Leitner topped out. Arsen Duval in second place with 43. Mizuki Tajima of Japan on 42. And Mikael Eisen, Luna Casella Molina on 39 plus. And in the female youth B competition, only three scores in so far, even though we have, we have just seen uh, Michelle Hillinger, uh, Victoria Meshikova currently leads on 45 plus. Irina Vadik with 43 and Elena Krasnopaskaya on 37 plus. And just to remind you, of course, all the results are online www.ifsc-climbing.org. Hannes Puman and Matthias Posh are 
come to the party here in New Caledonia. Both climbers just on the early part of their routes. And Mateus finds he's found a good resting point here. Yeah, I've never seen anyone do that before, so. <laughs> it's like a bat, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like an R screen. Yep. Spilling some chalk. That's always fun. But yeah, well, it's, it's only landed on, on the judges below, so. I don't think he'd be too fussed about that. The root setter is getting snowed on. <laughs> Snowing in the middle of spring. And in the South Pacific, indeed. Yep. Matthias Bosch. There you see. Let's see just to try and get around this volume. This is the resting point that he's looking at before he tackles the last end of the route. How many climb it goes to these resting points? What are they looking for in each of these points? Uh, they're looking for a good grip so that they can shake out their opposite hand. Uh, potentially deep pump, maybe rub their forearms against their knees if that helps. I've tried that once, it didn't really work for me, but to each their own. What works for you? Uh, just shaking really hard if I get a good grip. Each of their own, as you rightly say, Matthias Posh now. Walking perpendicular to the floor. Posh. Score he's looking to find is 45 plus right now. It's more or less one of the third to last or second to last moves here. So he's got to get round. Now. Mateus doing oh. excellent work. I spoke too soon. Kai Leitner is the only climber who's topped out on that, on there. And I said he, he's got four bullets to dodge, made that three. Hannes Pooman, in the meantime, he, he's the one searching out 45 plus to do beg your pardon. With this rest point here, you'd have a pretty good grip. He's wasting no time getting on with this game. Uh, could be taking a gamble, passing that point without a good rest. But if it's good enough for him, he should keep going. Well, as we mentioned before, about pace of play, pace of climbing as well, each to their own. And it's Pooman. This is the this is the moment. This is the the area. He said, "Go get the left hand right here." He could have stuck that, but he would have been called off because he didn't clip. Hannes Pooman likely to be around that 45 plus mark. Next climber out on the female youth bees is Natsuku Shimizu from Japan. Shimizu. 15 years of age. You got those really small holes that you can't quite see on screen. That you really have to squeeze on to be able to progress through the room. And you got a hard clip right here. Pulling into the first yellow feature. Everyone seems to be tanking through this zone quite easily. Yes, yeah, so, so many Japanese athletes have made it through to the finals, not just in these three finals, but across all six. It's been a good World Youth Championships for these for the Japanese team. Of course, looking at what Sachiyama did in recent times. He's had a good 2014, winning a couple of World Cups, won the Rock Masters as well, third in the World Championships. Keo Noguchi, who's always there uh, thereabouts, whether in bouldering or in or in league competition. Two good role models for these Japanese climbers. And two good ambassadors for Japanese climbing as well. Definitely. Obviously, from a Canadian point of view, you must look up to Sean McCall. I do. 
How much influence uh, has Sean given you? Has he given you any, any uh, pearls of wisdom, as it were? Uh, I've only talked to him like maybe four or five times. I know someone who's, I know someone who's been a pretty good friend of his, and I was also trained by him a couple times. Um, I do look pretty good. Uh, I do look up to him a lot. I try and keep my climbs fast like he does. And try not to uh, screw up my sequences, even though I do. It just <laughs> happens. <laughs> well, hopefully Sean can teach me a thing or two. You know, I've, the, the gauntlet's been laid down by my, my producer to uh, take him on the speed walk. I, I did have a go there this afternoon. I think I only got around for one or two moves, you know. Yeah, be those that. moves are pretty hard <laughs> the first time you do them. Natsuka Shinzu, that's the end of her campaign. May not be good enough to get on the podium, but we shall see. And once again, Japanese climbers having a great World Youth Championships here. Yuki Hada on the left-hand side. And we have Min Yung Lee on the right. Both in the early part. Hannes Puman does lead the male youth A final. 45 plus, three climbers tied on that score, in fact, but they refer back to their earlier scores in the semi finals. The first time I had count back, I really hated that. <laughs> it's a horrible feeling. I, know, yeah. I, I, I have it in. The sport, the sport, the sport, I love golf. When, when you're beating on a countback, it's a second. It really is. Yep. Kyle Leitner still leads the male youth B competition. He's the only climber so far to top out. And Victoria Meshkova of Russia still leads the female youth B final as well. She was the first climber out. 45 plus is still the target for the later climbers. on the left hand side of that feature is really not the best grip and his feet are also very well placed so, uh, Yuki yeah, on the left hand side yeah he's, he's, he's going about this you feel the wrong way um, I feel pretty good about that one coming up to his rest point right here if he chooses to use it I think you'll take your words of advice here. This will be a rest point for Yuki Hada. Wasting no time getting through that red feature. Hada, 17 years of age from Kashuhabi. He was fourth last year in Canada at the World Youth. We'll also look, see there Minyoung Lee at the bottom left of your screen. And Italy's Asciagolo is getting underway as well. Starting to struggle, skipping that. Won't take his curse, I told you. I told you it happens. I told you it happens. Yep. Welcome to the club. We've got jackets <laughs> made. <laughs> oh, you have jackets now. We do, yeah, indeed. <laughs> Min Young Lee. He's got him top out here. Because his score in the semi finals will be better than Kyle Leitner's. By one move, in fact, 45 for Min Young Lee. 44 plus for Kyle Leitner. Lee has to top out here if he wants to become the World Youth Champion. Those last few moves are very, very tough when you're that pumped. Oh. Kai Leitner looks on, he knows now he's guaranteed a medal. Fist pumps from other climbers on the stage. So Kai Leitner now has just two climbers to dodge. He needs to become a champion, the world youth champion, I should say. Asigolo now. 
15 years of age. Third to last climber to go out. Coming up to some very nice holds. Yep. Golo now. The third to last climber to come out. Currently in the female youth B competition, it's a Russian 1 2 3. Meshkova, 45 plus. Varek, 43. Dressa Baskaya, 37 plus. It's the top three in gold, silver, and medal position. But just to remind you, that there's still a number of climbers still to come out. Six climbers have already gone out in the male youth A competition. Hannes Puman leads of Sweden, 45 plus. Jan Luca Posch, 45 plus. George Palmer, 45 plus in second. Those three separated on their previous scores in the semi finals. And six climbers gone out already in the male youth B competition. Kai Leitner leading with the top. He's Gantier to Mendel. Min Young Lee, second place, 44 plus. Matthias Bosch of Austria, 43 plus, is your top three in the male youth B competition. Handful of climbers left to go. As we come into the last few climbers in all of these categories, the show could only get better. Indeed, as the, as the, as the great man once said. Golo. Around the overhang now. 45 plus is what she needs to surpass Victoria Meshkova. And we've got climbers elsewhere as well. Rudolf Rana of the United States. And Shinichiro Nomara of Japan. But Asha Golo here is making a good attempt here on this route. And maybe, just maybe, could be the one. Difficult, difficult with the feet here. It's a difficult part of the route. It's Very all on this. Nice, Coming out of that route, there is where the climb starts to get really hard on that route. You've got so much energy being sapped out of you, it's the last thing you want to see. Yeah. Definitely. Rudolf Rana. If he tops out, he will replace his teammate in the gold medal position, Kai Leitner. Shinichiro Nomara of Japan. His score, he needs to match 45 plus to go into first place. Rana needs the top to match Kai Leitner and to take the lead. Asigolo has the lead in the female youth B final. 49 plus for the Italian. She's in the gold medal position. The crowd definitely supporting these climbers as they enter the final section of the route. Indeed they are. And Rudolf Rana, maybe, just maybe here. The Redmond climber needs to top out here. All the other 46 teammates really behind him. 
Here we go, Rudolph really run it. Where's he gonna take the lead here? He wants it. Is he gonna get it? Oh! Zamora. Not going to be his day either. Kai Leitner has the lead in the Youth B final. The male Youth A, Anis Pumen, with the lead. I don't, I feel Namara did not get past 45 plus. I'll wait for confirmation if he did. But the final climber coming out now in the male youth B competition is Maichi Narasaki. And he has to top out here if he's to become the world youth champion. Laura Stockler in the meantime. 49 plus is what Laura needs to surpass or even match Asha Golov to take the gold medal position. One climber still to go. Getting exciting now, isn't it? Very. Taking a risk there with that clip. I, I keep being told not to do that. Why is that? Overextending your body is not the answer for any climb. Unless you know you it's part of your sequence and that you can do that. When you first started climbing, uh, what was the basics that you were taught? Because if any kid watches this right now and thinks, I want to give this a go. So if he's to come to a climbing gym, what's the first thing you would expect in his first few training sessions? Um, well, the first time I ever went to the gym was on a school field trip. But when I started training, uh, it was like my sixth year climbing. I was in there, or my sixth session type thing. So my second year climbing, I started doing competitions. Um, I was the, I was basically the team at the gym that I was at, and our coach would never show up. <laughs> but, but what was the few things that you were taught? I was taught how to move properly. In the uh, in the second top rope course that I took, and then when I started doing lead, it was if you back clip or if you Z clip, you're off the team. You're out. You yeah. can't come back. Go to another gym. Yeah. So learning from that, I've only Z clipped once in my life, accidentally, <laughs> and I've only ever back clipped in a roof on purpose. <laughs> So, so basically, you were taught the hard way over in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> no, the gym that I was at was very strict. I would not recommend any gym to teach a nine-year-old how to climb lead. <laughs> I, I'd leave that for their first year of competing. Brilliant. Brilliant. Laura Stocker still on the wall. Maachi Nanasaki on this white route. Needs to top out here. If he is to become the world youth champion. Will Bosey. The Edinburgh climber just getting underway. 45 plus is what he needs to match if he's to become the world youth champion. So Nishiro Nomura is in sixth place, he got a 41 plus. And one thing I will mention here in New Caledonia, it's raining. I didn't even notice. Just see, it's just light drizzle for now, but it could have an effect on these climbers going out late. Especially if it blows into the wall. I'm just looking at it right now. It looks like it's blown away from the wall. Currently, the, the way the wind's blowing across here from behind the wall, across, as it were. So, it may not have too much of an effect, and it's only light, light rain as it. It's going, and I can tell you some news as well. Maichi Narasaki has come off the wall. 
which means, provisionally, we have a new world champion. Very good. Very good indeed. Yes, unconfirmed, but provisionally, Kai Leitner is the world youth champion at the male youth B category. I think, I think now you've only just realised, just looking at the stage, I think you just realised that he's done it. It'll probably be a shocker for all the climbers getting off the wall and going, wait, it's raining? Well, Bosey has gone off the wall and he's not very happy whatsoever. He's gone off really early. Maybe part of the route confused him, but if that's the case, then provisionally again, Hannes Puman of Sweden is the World Youth Champion. Laura Stokla. Still got one climber to come, which is Janja Gambre. Oh. Stokla coming off the wall. I don't think she got as high as Asha Golo. So, Asha Golo has just has got Janja Gambre to dodge, and she will be the world youth champion. We'll just wait, wait for confirmation on all of these. But as we stand right now, provisionally, Kai Leitner is the world youth champion at male in the youth B category. But the only climber to chop out in the final, Rudolf Rana of the United States in second place. He'll pick up the silver. And Min Chung Lee of Korea. And Leitner, you can see there, he's in tears. He knows what this means to him. And a deserved victory there, Keeper. Very deserved. He worked really hard this weekend. He was a bit unhappy in his qualms, but he's wiping the tears away. He is the world youth champion. Congratulations to him. Provisionally. As I said, provisionally. Hannes Puman of Sweden is the world youth champion. Jean-Luca Posch of Austria will pick up the silver. George Palmer of Austria will pick up the bronze. All three of them climbers, 45 plus a piece. So I say that provisionally, that one may be subject, may be subject to appeals, but we shall see. Final climber going out. Yanni Gambre. As the rain is really getting heavy here now. As you guys can see, she's trying to keep her pace, moving efficiently. Trying to put every single detail from her training into the route that she's climbing at the moment. 49 plus is the target, Ashagolo of Italy is the one in the chair right now with one hand on the gold medal. Only Gambrea Savini is the only one who can snatch it from her grasp. So what can this 15 year old from Slovenia do? As I mentioned, the rain, you can't see it on your screen right now, but it has gone heavier. And weather is forecast for tomorrow as well. May bring a change in the timetable here in New Mayer. No doubt, it's 
Albanian team really behind. Calm right here. To see them up on the wall from my comfort position. She gets to reach the overhang. So it's a slow and steady start here, Kiefer, for the Slovenian. Like I said earlier, every climber has their pace. This seems to be hers. Wasting no time getting back on track here. Even though you're tired, you always have to stay precise. Those long, quick draws were definitely a killer for some of the climbers, even a few people on my team. And then others just blow through them like it's nothing. Crowd is supporting our last climber, moving through the roof section of our route. And she's asking the crowd to get behind her as well. Just like Akio Noguchi. <laughs> Always doing that. A la la Kayo. Most definitely nervous, not knowing what position her, uh, the other climbers have gotten to. Hence the beauty of isolation. It's all a play with your mind. Superb stuff this from Gambre. Patience may be the key here. Maybe one move away from becoming the world Interesting champion. Interesting move here. Wonderful. If you're going to do it, do it in style. Do we have it? Hear the roar from the crowd. Yannick Ambre, you are the world youth champion. Congratulations. Really efficient moves on those last parts. Pulled through it like it was nothing. So, I'll give you confirmation. Yannick Ambre topped out. She is the world youth champion. Ayagolo of Italy will pick up the silver medal. 49 plus in the first time who came out in that conversation. Vittoria Meskova of Russia. 45 plus. She will pick up the bronze. We have the smoke machines going. They'll get ready for the presentation ceremonies, no doubt. Keeper, we've seen three great, great finals here. What's been your highlight? Uh, I believe Kyle Leitner's top on the first and this last top on the youth B girls. It's been it's been su superb, absolutely superb. Here we go, here's confirmation of all three finals. Kai Leitner of the United States of America is the World Youth Championship for the youth B category. His teammates Rudolf Rana of the United States in second place with a 45 plus. South Korea's Min Young Lee will pick up the bronze medal with a 44 plus. Quite an amazing show, and tomorrow will be as well. Youth A male final, Hannes Puman of Sweden is the world youth champion. Gianluca Posch of Austria will pick up the silver. Jorg Palmer will pick up the bronze. The reason, of course, you see the 45 plus each, they have been separated on their previous scores in their semi-final. Hence, that is how we separated gold, silver and bronze.
And finally, still waiting for confirmation of Yanya Gambre's top to come through on our scoring system. But I can tell you with all confidence, she will be the World View Champion. And indeed, there is confirmation of it. Yanya Gambre of Slovenia, the World View Champion. Ashigolo of Italy will pick up the silver medal with a 49 plus. And Victoria Meskova of Russia, the first climber out in that final, will pick up the bronze medal. So with three finals down, and there will be three more tomorrow night. So three finals to come tomorrow night. We will see the female youth A, and the male juniors and the female juniors as well. Keep it, that will be one exciting final tomorrow, whenever it happens, because it could be moved in the afternoon because of the weather here. It should be really exciting, whatever happens. Very much so. The route setting has been great. And I love this wall. <laughs> I'm looking forward to my speed climbing tomorrow. Ah, uh, yes, so you're taking part in the speed climbing uh, qualifiers, aren't you? Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Uh, how many are in your uh, in your group? Uh, I'm the only one in youth A, but we have two youth B girls going with us. Yeah. How, how many uh, Canadian athletes will we see tomorrow uh, morning on the wall? Three. Just, just three of you guys. We had three today. Then there's going to be three tomorrow. You've been taught, uh, as you mentioned before, you've been taught lead the hard way, <laughs> as you mentioned. <laughs> Tell me, uh, how do you teach speed? Because this is something that um, even I thought of having to go out earlier in the day. And then I had a look at these first couple of holes and I thought, hang on a minute. I've got no chance for me, a 31-year-old uh, guy. You guys must have been taught for a while. How do you tackle a speed wall? Even if it's the same route all over the world, it still, it still must, be, uh, must be difficult to, to start, especially. Uh, it is very difficult to start. The first thing I I do is I eliminate all the buzzer and the timer and everything. I just have a climber, if, if I were training, he or she, climb up the route once, give them pointers, then work section by section, probably three moves at a time. Uh, I had to learn the second half of the route, the 15 meter part, uh, later on right before this comp because of time constraints and we don't really have a 15 meter wall at the gym that I train. Ah, okay. So, uh, so it's, it's been a little bit difficult for you, uh, yeah. for your training because you don't have a 15 meter high wall. Yeah. Was it just what, a 10 meter high is it? Or? Yeah. Our wall's 10 meter high. We were fortunate enough to have a coach that set the second half for us and put the, a box, a tape box, where the buzzer would be at the top. So, so yeah. So, so no. Hopefully, we'll we'll, uh, we'll help you guys out tomorrow morning. Uh, as I mentioned, we're just getting ready for the uh, presentation ceremonies here. The crowd's still strong. So a few of them are just going to get some refreshments. Uh, maybe a couple of uh, hot dogs or some hamburgers. They do a wicked chicken curry. I've, I've been over there earlier today. It's been. It was superb. I, I, do, I do recommend keeping you go over there. Chicken curry with spinach. Tremendous. Ooh. Tre absolutely tremendous, yes. Uh, um, for those in the crowd that are re-watching this stream, if you are, go and check out the pancakes. <laughs> the pancakes are the best. Brilliant. Yeah, it's been superb here in New Caledonia. How long have you been here, by the way? Uh, when did you guys arrive? Uh, we had four days before the comp just to adjust to the whole jet lag. I myself haven't didn't experience much, just like the second night, I stayed up another hour and was fine. Uh, going back will definitely be hard. <laughs> I heard it's a lot worse. Uh, yeah, they say going uh, west to east is always always quite difficult, but surprisingly, but me and my producer were, were okay coming from the UK over here to New Caledonia, even though it took me to get from Gijon to New Caledonia 46 hours and 30 minutes from leaving my hotel in Gijon to get to my hotel here in Maya. <laughs> but that being said, you know, it was it was a good for you guys to get over the jet lag. What else have you been doing here apart from training? Have you had the time down the beach? Have you just been uh, have you had a chance to relax more than a Well, near a hotel there's an island of 
like an island rock formation, which looked promising for, I guess, an outdoor boulder problem, you could say. Not really after we got there, but you can walk at low tide, knee deep, all the way there. Yeah, it, it's uh, just by our hotel, actually. You know, we, we were looking out to all the kite surfers earlier this afternoon, um, and uh, I was thinking, well, I'm actually deep water, and then somebody told me, it's no, no, no deeper than your knee, and, and this is water that goes out. Yeah. Uh, for miles on end. Yeah, watching those kite servers, it looks like they have small jet engines, <laughs> underwater jet engines going. Yeah, fascinating watching them this afternoon from uh, from uh, my hotel. Just uh, there's always a ongoing breeze around around where we are, and uh, there's always kite surfers galore the uh, the uh, this afternoon, and um, get all amazingly tempted to have a go myself, but those days are long, long, long gone. Um, tell me about the future of. You yourself, what's what's going to happen a uh, couple of years from now? Are you a lead climber? You're going to have to maybe take the bouldering up, speed you enjoy. I'm, I'm or, mainly or are you going to be in the Sean McCall Mountains to go do all three. <laughs> I'm mainly a lead climber. I only got to speed like a couple of years ago, uh, just because we didn't really have the official wall. Um, being mostly a lead climber, I do boulder. I do the bouldering comp mostly because I'm forced to. I wouldn't say I'm forced to, but I kind of have to uh, for the whole circuit that we have in uh, in Quebec. And speed is mandatory until further notice, I guess. <laughs> Why is that? Because back when the circuit was started, the FQME, the Quebec Climbing Federation, Comp circuit. Speed climbing. There was no official wall. No gym had one. The gym that I was at moved a couple years ago and built a, a speed wall specifically for training us. Because when our coach came over from Western Canada, he's like, we need a speed wall if we want world class climbers. We can't just send them to nationals across the country and have uh, just random records, we're not going to do one. So. so that is part of the training regime, we're not just looking at lead climbing, but like, speed. How much does that speed climbing help you in the other disciplines, like the lead or uh, Help me have a faster pace so that I'm not wasting time, I'm using but I'm not underusing it, I'm using it efficiently so that I'd have time to rest, I'd have time to move about the route efficiently when I get to the crux and past that when I'm really tired. As you mentioned, your your um, fellow countryman who's been a trailblazer on the world, uh, Sean McCall, <laughs> you, you know, like, I, I couldn't believe it the first time I met him and uh, it was, uh, I think it was in Chongqing a couple of years ago, in fact, and, uh, and he was telling me about himself and telling me about myself. And uh, one thing I couldn't believe is he's, he's, he's a classical accomplished pianist, which I thought was, you know, an amazing fact yeah, about it. Yeah, I, I heard that uh, recently. He's like grade 12 piano or something. Yeah, it's, uh, I still haven't seen it done, but I know Sean watches these with, with eagerness, and I know he'll be on the Asia tour. So if you find a piano, Sean, I want you to prove this to me. We can get it on film, so. We can show the world how much of a great pianist you are, and as well as a great climber. But he must be something you look up to. Uh, who are the, who else in the world of climbing do you yourself keep? Uh, who, do, who else do you look up to and think, yeah, he's he's a good influence on me. Um, I definitely look up to the older people on my team. I look up to my coach, Young, uh, very strong climber, and still excels at climbing even though he doesn't really compete. He's more organizer than competitor. But yeah, I look up to him, I look up to like again Sean McCall, a lot of other climbers who for some reason escape my mind at this point. <laughs> Um, it's okay, like, 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 no, yeah. it's your first time down, down doing this, you, you said to me uh, this afternoon that's, that in the future it's uh, commentary on, on video games that, that is the route you, you'd, lo you'd love to go down. But well, not really a route, just something to do for fun. 
yeah. Hey, hey, look, I, like, I, I wanted to do this when I was a kid, be a sports commentator, and, 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 and now I'm getting paid to go uh, and to do all it all around, all, all around the world. It's one of the best jobs, the best jobs in the world, it really is. Uh, but what, one of the things I was, uh, I was going to mention, uh, in fact, you know, talking about idols and, you know, guys that you look up to, you obviously must have seen what happened in Gijon last week and what Adam Andre achieved. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and Shane Kim. I wasn't really watching. I heard it on my mother's computer, though. My mother watched it. people's training, that piece of advice is, you could even do this with your parents, have both you and your parents sitting in front of a boulder problem, let's say, uh, both of you look at the route and then you, like, give yourself maybe a minute or a minute and a half to look, however you would in like a, a five on five off bouldering comp, and um, tell your parent, like, for a minute, how, like, every single little detail of your, like, not down to each muscle group, but, like, every foothold, every handhold, every movement, and um, then go and climb the route, give yourself maybe three to four minutes, and see if that helps you with your route reading. That's helped me a little bit, and I'm sure it'll help me a lot more as I keep doing that. How much of a uh, help has uh, been your mum on on climbing? Is it is it not just helping you with your route reading, but no doubt taking you to the gyms and, yeah. and and everything else to get you where you are here, sitting next to me here in New Caledonia? Yeah, definitely. My mother's very into the sport. Ever since I started climbing, well, not really, but she'd always get me to my class my belaying class or my training session uh, until I I got my own bus pass, <laughs> which now takes me like an hour and a half to get there from school. <laughs> I wish it didn't. I wish she didn't work so late. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's it, you know it it must be satisfying that you do a hobby that you found a passion that you really love and enjoy. Yeah. For most people, they find it later in life. Some people, they find it right as they're born. Other, when they're kids, in their teens, late teens, something. Well, though, I must say, uh, Canada, a uh, superb country. I've been uh, on a number of occasions, uh, especially when we did the uh, climbing there in Hamilton about 12 months ago when I, on the crowd there was insane. Um, but one thing I will say about Canada is the outdoor how beautiful it is. Climbing indoor, you told me about climbing outdoor. How much of that do you think? Um, I don't climb outdoors as much as most people think, uh, or as much as my coach would like. I do. How I did, however, take a week-long trip after our Team Canada training camp to go outdoors in Canmore, Alberta. The sites there are really really great for those of you around the world that would like to travel to Canada. Um, the other time that I really got into outdoor climbing was my first real time when I went to Rumney, New Hampshire in the US. That place is phenomenal for uh, many reasons. I never bouldered there, I only, I only roof climbed. There's some places up north from Montreal uh, that you can climb. There's like a, a small, a, a small bouldering area next to the Six Flags Park La Ronde, which isn't too impressive, but you can get a good climbing session there. Um, so then, I appreciate the time that you spent with us, Keith. It's been fascinating. You, you know, well, like I've always been used to uh, the, the, the older guys the next to me, and it's nice to have a useful insight. My thanks for you coming into the commentary box this evening, it's been great. Hope to be back in the future. <laughs> Cheers, Peter. I'm going to hand you over now to Matthias, our MC here in New Caledonia. He's going to take you through the medal ceremony. Ceremony. Des championnats du monde. 
escalade. 26 nations représentées. The best climber of the world here in Nouméa. The athlete must come, otherwise I will keep the medal for me. J'ai dit je garderai la médaille s'il ne pas les athlètes. All the athletes must be here for the medal ceremony. Andrea Roras from Equator, please come. Andrea. Hello the world C'est parti pour la remise des prix des championnats du monde jeunes Female USB Speed She's in the third position Anastasia Manulova from Russia Pierre-Henri Payasson, directeur technique national à la Fédération Française de Montagne et d'Escalade, lui remet sa médaille de bronze. Et Philippe Boquet, président du comité régional de Montagne et d'Escalade, félicite Anastasia Manulova. Mais she's got the bronze medal in female use A. In the second position, she's also from Russia. She's called Anastasia Kloshkova. Mr. Pierre Yu, president of FFME, is giving her a silver medal. She is the quickest climber of the world in USA. She's from Russia, Daria Khan. I'm going to redo it 
She's the quickest climber in the world in her category. Daria Khan! Et pour lui remettre son prix, Mr. Marcos Colaris, President of IFSC. Congratulations! Et pour remettre son prix à Doria Khan, M. jean lec maire honoraire de Nouméa, qui lui remet son trophée. Congratulations. You will remember Nouméa. Congratulations, the quickest youth A female of the world. Daria Khan, Anastasia Kloshkova, and Anastasia Manulova. Congratulations. All together for a picture. Yes. A podium 100% Russe. Three Russian girls on the podium. Congratulations. On va continuer avec la remise des prix Junior Speed. Chez les filles, the female Junior Speed podium. She's the third. She's coming from Austria. She's Alexandra Elmer. Pour lui remettre sa médaille de bronze, Pierre-Henri Payasson, DTN à la Fédération Française de Montagne et d'Escalade. Philippe Boquet, président du comité régional de montagne et d'escalade. She's the second quickest ju female junior. She's from Ecuador, Andrea Rojas. Yes, yes, yes! Si, si, si! Pour lui remettre sa médaille d'argent, for a silver medal, Mr. Pierre Yu, President of FFMI. Yes!
She's the quickest junior of the world. She's from Russia, Svetlana Motovilova. Yeah! <laughs> to give her a medal, Mr. Marco Scolaris, president of IFSC. Et pour lui remettre son trophée, Monsieur Jean Lec, maire honoraire de Nouméa. Mister Jean Lec, former mayor of Nouméa. Congratulations! Merci. Et donc l'hymne de la Russie. Im Yes, beautiful. Thank you, girls, and congratulations. We're going to continue with the male junior speed ceremony. La ceremony chez les garçons junior épreuve de vitesse. His in third position is coming from Italia, Alessandro Santoni. Pierre Henri Payasson, National Technic Director of the French Federation, is giving him his silver medal. Mr. Philippe Boquet, director of the regional committee in New Caledonia, is giving him his prize. He's the second quickest climber of the world. I'm sorry. He's from Russia. His name is Sergei Luchesky. Monsieur Pierre Yu, président de la Fédération Française de Montagne et d'Escalade.
Monsieur Philippe Boquet, président du comité régional de montagne et d'escalade. Is the quickest junior on a climbing wall on earth is coming from Czech Republic. His name is Jan Chris. Yes. And to give him his prize, Mr. Marco Scolaris, president of IFSC. Et pour lui remettre son trophée, to give him his trophy, Mr. Jean Lec, former mayor of Numea. And a big bag. Now, please host the hymn of Czech Republic. Congratulations for a picture all together. The quickest man on earth, the quickest junior on earth. Russia, Czech Republic, Italia. Good. Thank you guys. We're going to continue with the female USB lead ceremony. On va continuer avec la remise des prix pour les jeunes filles. En difficulté, l'épreuve de difficulté minime, un podium russe, italien, slovène. She's in third position, she's coming from Russia. Victoria Meshkova! Monsieur Pierre-Henri Payasson, National Technique Director of FFME, is giving her a bronze medal. And Mr. Philippe Boquet, Regional Director of the Committee. She's coming from Italia. She's in second position. USB lead, Adja Goro! Mr. Piaiu. President of FFME is giving her a silver medal.
Monsieur Boquet, directeur du comité régional de montagne et d'escalade. Félicite à Jagolo, médaille d'argent chez les minimes filles. It's now time to congratulate the best shoes B climber of the world. She's coming from Slovenia, Janja Gambre. To give her a prize, Mr. Marco Scolari is president of IFSC. And to give her a trophy, Mr. Jean Lec, Maire Honoraire de Nouméa. Merci, Monsieur Lec. Bravo, Yania, qui a merveilleusement grimpé avec l'aide du public. The public of Nouméa is part of his gold medal. Madame et Monsieur, please, ac vouliez accueillir l'hymne de Slovénie. Thank you, girls. We're going to continue with the boy, Mel B lead. Nous allons continuer avec uh, la remise des prix de la catégorie minime garçon. In the third position, he's coming from Korea. His name is Mini Ons Lee. To give him his prize, Mr. Pierre-Henri Payasson, DTN de la Fédération Française de Montagne et d'Escalade, National Technique Director of FFMI. Et Monsieur Philippe Boquet, directeur régional. Directeur régional du comité de montagne et d'escalade de Nouvelle-Calédonie. He's in second position. He's coming from USA. Rudolf Ruana! Monsieur Pierre You, président de la Fédération Française de Montagne et d'Escalade, is receiving his medal from Pierre You, president of FFMI.
et son trophée de la part de Philippe Boquet, directeur du comité régional de montagne et d'escalade de Nouvelle-Calédonie. The New Caledonian Regional Committee of Mountain and Climbing. Il est le grand vainqueur dans la catégorie minime garçon. Il the winner in USB lead. He's coming from the States. He's Kai Leitner. <applaudissements> to give him his prize, Mr. Marco Scolaris. Pour lui remettre son trophée, Monsieur Jean Lec, président du comité, euh, ancien maire de Nouméa. Mrs. and Mr. Please host the hymn of USA. Thank you guys. One picture maybe all together. This is uh, the last medal for tonight. We will meet together again tomorrow. Congratulations, guys. So we're gonna do the last summer. We're gonna give medal to the male USA lead. Remise des médailles pour les Cadet Garçon is in third position. He's coming from Austria, Gorge Pharma.
Monsieur Pierre-Henri Taillasson, DTN de la FFME, lui remet sa médaille de bronze. The National Technic Director of the French Federation is giving his medal. Like Mr. Philippe Boquet, Regional Director of the Federation in New Caledonia. In second position is coming also from Austria, John Luca Bocca. Yeah! Pour lui remettre son prix, to give him his prize, Mr. Pierre Yu, the FFMI President, President of the Federation Française de Montagne et d'Escalade. Joined by Mr. Philippe Boquet. Regional Director from the Federation in New Caledonia. And the winner of the day coming from Sweden is called Anes Puman. Congratulations. Mr. Marco Scolaris, President of IFSC. Congratulate him. And to give him his trophy, Mr. Jean Lec, former mayor of Noumea. Merci, Monsieur Lec. Please, everybody, Mr. and Mrs. Host. The Swedish hymn, l'hymne suédois. Veuillez accueillir. The best male use of the world. Maybe a picture all together. Yes. Yes. Merci à tous pour cette belle soirée. Please for the coach. You have a meeting at 9. 9 p.m. meeting for all the coach at the board. The meeting is at 9 p.m. Merci à tous. Félicitations à tous les volontaires. So there you have it. What a great evening's entertainment we've had here in New Caledonia. Word has come to us that weather is on the way here tomorrow, so the timetable is likely to be changed and rehashed. Half past 10, we are due to start here for speed qualifications. Then we'll go straight into the speed finals and likely the lead finals will be after that. So we we'll a few coffee breaks in between, but climbing galore from 10.30 here local time in the morning. But tonight, six young lead climbers Three young lead climbers and three young speed climbers have 
achieved World Youth Championship glory and a night they'll never forget. From me, Johnny Bryan, and the rest of the team here in Numea, back to join us. Good night from New Caledonia.